Hello everybody and welcome to another video and today we're going to be looking at a band called Repugnant. Now I hadn't heard of them before, this was suggested to me by actually one of the guys in my band. Um, so I had to do a little bit of research and what I found was actually quite, quite interesting. Um, what I found was Repugnant was a Swedish death metal band from Stockholm, active from 1998 to 2004. The band has been cited as one of the first revivalists of the Swedish death metal movement, along with Kamos. They recorded their only studio album, The Epitome of Darkness, in 2002, but it was left unreleased when the band broke up in 2004, and was only later then published in 2006. Vocalist and guitarist Mary Gore, real name Tobias Forge, recruited a new lined-up of Repugnant to perform at the Hell's Pleasure Festival in 2010. Now that name may sound familiar, Tobias Forge. I covered him only a couple of days ago when I did the video for Cerise by Ghost. Now Ghost, obviously, was a more of a sort of rock band sort of sound, and I said, you know, Tobias Forge had a great voice. Now this is a Swedish death metal band fronted by the same singer. So, I'm very interested to see what this sounds like. Now, as I said, they only ever released one album, The uh, Epitome of Darkness, which was released in 2006. Uh, before that, they released uh, two demos, two EPs, and two split EPs. So, they, they didn't really have very much success, and um, Tobias Forge has actually mentioned that, you know, he kind of laments the fact that they didn't get very far. Uh, now, today we're going to be looking at a track called Draped in Cerecloth. Um, had to look up what that was. Cerecloth is a waxed cloth used for wrapping and binding corpses um, to make them waterproof. So, there we go. So, I, I'm very intrigued by this because, like I said, I, I thought um, Tobias Forge, or Papa Emeritus, as he's more commonly known, had an excellent voice when I listened to Ghost. I thought he had a really good voice. So, I'm really interested to hear him do death metal vocals. So, mm, I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. Uh, I've got the lyrics up here, um, and we'll see what we get. So, we'll jump straight into it. So, Draped in Cerecloth by Repugnant. Let's have a look.
was very different from what we heard when we listened to Ghost. So obviously, he's a very multi-talented vocalist. Um, you know, obviously, when he was doing Ghost, he's got a very clean um, a vocal style. Here he's got quite a harsh, very... I'd say it's a very early style, old-school death metal vocal sound. You know, it's not like the more modern sort of very deep guttural growls that you get in most death metal these days this is a much higher pitched death metal vocal style which was more towards like the the 90s really and i mean the band was formed in the late 90s so you know kind of makes a little bit of sense but very very different from what i expected it was quite surprising now this is a typical old school death metal song lyrically. It doesn't really have a particularly deep meaning, and it's it's quite it's quite vulgar, and it's what what I would consider to be the not not the cliche, but what most people tend to think death metal is. You know, it's all about death corpses and you know that sort of thing it's not a particularly deep song but we'll go through the lyrics anyway it goes exhumation of a tomb evil haunted catacomb rotten corpse covered in dust drained arteries in rust bring us bring a saw cut off an arm necrophilia has its charm molestation of the dead with a cut off head Smell the decomposed stiff, erosion of life. God awful horrid sniff strikes a lethal strike. Urged to fulfil an ever needed thrill, a sinful corpse to obey my will. Copulation with the deceased, genital bacteria has sure increased. Gluttony unto what remain, ravage unto feebles gain. Blasphemy to f the dead, sanity the inner voices said. Whispers inside my brain, telling me to cure the pain. Your remnants so unpure, jailed to putrefaction, you're. Draped in cerecloth, raped in sepulchral rot. Draped in cerecloth, draped in sepulchral rot. Compulsion controls my mind, unspeakable inclinations behind. Dismemberment of the late, eye to eye with a certain fate. Smell the decomposed stiff, erosion of life. Godawful horrid sniff strikes a lethal strife. Exhumation of a tomb, evil haunted catacomb. Rotted corpse covered in dust, drained arteries in rust. Bring a saw, cut of an arm, necrophilia has its charm. Molestation of the dead, with a cut off head. Whispers inside my brain, telling me to cure the pain. Your remnants so unpure, gelled to putrefaction, you're. Draped in cerecloth, raped in sepulchral rot. Draped in cerecloth, raped in sepulchral rot. So there you go. It's, like I said, it's a pretty typical almost cliche death metal song, you know, talking about corpses, necrophilia, uh, there's even a brief mention in there of possibly eating the corpse as well, so, you know, it's not a particularly deep song, it's a it's a typical cliche of a death metal song. Um, but, I still liked it, it was really, really good, you know, musically, quite heavy, very reminiscent of, sort of, late, late 90s, or possibly even late late 80s uh, throughout the 90s sort of death metal it's just gone very very dark anyway you know so it's got a certain 
nostalgic feel to it in the sound. Um, and I quite liked it. And the vocal performance, like I said, again, very good. It had a very sort of raw, almost independent style sound to it. It may well have been an independent album. I don't know if it was actually released through any official labels or not. You know, so it had that certain, you know, independent sort of sound to it, almost like it was recorded in a garage with sort of very basic equipment. It sounded good. I liked it. You know, that's the sort of music I like. So, um, very, very interesting. And it was very interesting to hear this different side of Tobias Forge's vocal style, you know, to, to see the variations that he can actually perform. So, really quite interesting. It's a shame that they didn't actually see more success. Um, because I would, I would have very much liked to have heard more of that stuff. Um, I may have to indulge and try and get my hands on that album if I can find it anywhere, just so I can give the whole thing a listen. So, um, yeah, that was very, very interesting, but I don't really know what else to say about that. I quite liked it. It was very intriguing to see the, to see the drastic difference between the two bands. But um, there we go. Uh, I'll leave that as it is. Uh, now, if anybody would like to suggest a track for me to react to, then please do so. By all means, you can drop a comment in the comment section below or message me on my Facebook or my Instagram, or you could even message me through my Patreon, where you could also help to support this channel, which would be a great help to me. Uh, there is also an option in uh, Patreon where you can get your suggestion jumped to the front of the queue, should you so desire. Um, there are a couple of restrictions on that, though. Just just to be fair to people who suggest tracks through uh, regular means, like through YouTube comments, Facebook and Instagram uh, comments and stuff like that, you know, it's just to be fair to them, because if, you know, everybody made their suggestions through Patreon using that option, you know, the people making suggestions through those um, mediums wouldn't get a chance, you know, their, their tracks wouldn't get a, a chance to be looked at. Um... And if you do suggest a track through those regular means, do know it might take me a while to get around to them since I do get suggested so many tracks every single day that my list grows faster than I can record the videos. Um, but I do write down every suggestion I get, so it'll get done eventually. It just might take me a while to get around to it, I'm afraid. Also, Metalhead Reacts is a proud supporter of the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, a British-based charity whose main goal is to put an end to hate crimes, mainly those involving people of the alternative community. And it's something I believe in very, very strongly, something I'm very, very passionate about, because it's something that I've had to deal with for most of my life, and it's something that goes widely ignored. It's widely ignored. No one ever talks about it. And, you know, I think that's something that needs to change, because it is a very real problem. And this is the fact that people from the alternative culture are getting violently attacked just purely for the fact that they listen to alternative music, for the fact that they wear alternative fashions. And, you know, like I said, this is something that's been going on for years, for bloody decades. You know, I've, I've been dealing with it for almost 30 years of my life, you know. And, you know, we're not talking about like stupid little things like getting insults shouted at you from across the streets or people purposefully shoulder ramming you or bumping into you on the street, you know, just to show that they disagree with the way you dress or the music you listen to. I'm talking about real violent crimes where people are getting brutally attacked and hospitalised just because of their taste in music. And, you know, we're talking about things like people going into hospital with broken limbs and sometimes more life-threatening injuries just because of their taste in music. And... You know, th this never gets spoken about. The last time it was spoken about was 13 years ago, when Sophie Lancaster and her boyfriend Rob Maltby were violently attacked by a group of five or six people that beat them so severely that they both ended up in comas. Now, Rob Maltby, he thankfully survived this attack. He was in a coma for around about a week, maybe a little bit longer. I can't remember exactly how long. But Robert Maltby, he thankfully survived. Sophie Lancaster, on the other hand, was in a coma for 13 days before she succumbed to her injuries and she died. This young woman was 20 years old, I think, and she was beaten to death. She was murdered just because she listened to alternative music, because she wore alternative fashion. And this was 13 years ago. This was all over the news 13 years ago. But that's the last time we've heard anything about it. But I can guarantee you, in fact, I know for a fact that similar attacks have happened in that 13 year space since it happened. But we've never heard a single goddamn thing about it. 
You know, every day we hear about all these other hate crimes like sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, religious hatred, etc. You know, we hear about these every single day from the most violent of these crimes where people are murdered because of the colour of their skin or because of their religious beliefs or because of their uh, sexual identity or preference down to the most pathetic and petty of these crimes where entitled white women are calling the police because a family of colour are having a picnic in a public space, you know. We hear every facet of these on every media platform every single day, but we don't hear about these people that are getting beaten to within an inch of their life because of their taste in music and clothing. You know, and it's something that really, really needs to be addressed, you know, because, you know, when it, when it comes to the point that a young woman is murdered, is beaten to death just because she likes heavy metal, just because she likes wearing you know, heavy metal t-shirts or, you know, alternative fashion. Things are getting beyond ridiculous, you know. You, you, I mean, you, you don't violently attack someone because they like different movies and TV shows to you. You don't violently attack someone because they like different books or magazines to you or, you know, different flavoured crisps or different flavoured ice creams to you. So why is music a trigger point? Why do people think that it's acceptable to violently attack someone just because of their taste in music? You know, it, 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 it completely blows my mind, you know. We hear about, you know, entitled Karen, you know, complaining about some foreigner, but we don't hear about people getting hospitalised, getting put into a coma because of their taste in music. You know, this is something that needs to be addressed. It cannot go ignored. Because you know, if, if we ignore it, we're essentially just letting the perpetrators of these crimes get away with it, saying, you know, it's okay, you carry on, because we're not going to do anything about it. When, you know, And that, that needs to stop. We can't let what happened to Sophie Lancaster ever happen again. It's something that never should have happened in the first place. And this is what the Sophie Lancaster Foundation is all about. They want to bring more attention to the fact that this is happening. They want to bring attention to the fact that this is a real problem, and people are really suffering because of something so ridiculous you know they they don't want to see another family go through what they went through when they had to watch their daughter slowly die over the course of two weeks because a group of people couldn't handle the fact that that, that this person had their own identity that they thought for themselves that they had a different opinion you know and we, we, we can't let it happen again. We can't let it continue. It needs to stop. It needs to change. I can't count the amount of times I have been beaten to the ground and, you know, battered and bruised just because of my taste in music. You know, members of my family, friends have been through this same sort of thing just because of the taste in music. And it's it needs to stop. It needs to change. Something has to be done. So if you'd like to find out more about the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, there is a link to their website in the description below. You can go over there, find out what they're working on at the moment, find out what their um, main goal is, because they can explain it a lot better than I can. Um, and if you can help them out in any small way, obviously don't feel obligated to do so, but if you can help them out in any small way, whether it's a small donation through their website or something as simple as one of these Sophie wristbands from their web store or maybe even this one, you know, they've got a whole bunch of other merch on there as well. You know, the smallest amount can make the biggest difference and the sooner we bring more attention to this, the sooner we get more people talking about this, the sooner we get more recognition of the fact that this is happening, the sooner we can help to stamp out prejudice, hatred and intolerance everywhere. But I'm going to leave that as it is for the time being. Thank you all very, very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.